Good day dear chess lovers, Zoran here and in today's video I want to share with you a very sharp and entertaining attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Latvian chess player Robert Skuja and the game was played in 1955 in Riga at Latvian Championship. But before starting the game a few words about Tal's opponent. Skuja learned how to play chess at age 14. From 1930 to 1971, he participated in the Latvian Chess Championship, all in all 18 times. His best result was sharing second and third place in 1950. All his life, he was an agricultural worker. With this being said now, we can go through the game. The future world chess champion, who at the time of this game was around 18, opened up with d4, to which Skuja answered with knight f6 c4 d6, knight c3 g6, black is going for king's Indian defense, against which white is choosing the so-called fianchetto variation. Bishop g2, knight d7, white castled kingside, e5, queen c2, rook e8, rook d1, white is ok allowing black to play this e4 move, Tal is actually inviting black to make that move, but Skuja chose c6 continuation, b3, and again in here e4 is something which usually players are choosing, for example playing e4 and then d5 can be really good, but in our game we have queen c7 and seeing that black is not eager to put his pawn on e4, Tal himself occupied that square, a6, bishop a3, and now white wants to go for d takes e5 and put his bishop on d6, c5, at the time this was a novelty, before this bishop f8 had been seen, or you can even play e takes d4 and then c5. Instead, in our game, we have c5 straight away. d takes c5, knight takes c5, b4, knight e6, and c5. Uh, Tal is looking for a quick attack. Uh, according to Stock Finish, preparing that breakthrough, for example, with a move like rook ac1 is a better idea but Tal is going for a direct kill, he's not eager of wasting time on building up a slow attack. d takes c5, knight d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, and now we have a passed pawn on the d file, uh, c takes b4, queen a4, attacking black rook, bishop d7, and queen takes b4. Still the knight on e6 is hanging, but instead of moving it, black first decided to attack white queen. And this is something which Tal was really happy with. And at this point, instead of making a move like queen d2, he played d takes e6. The magician goes for a queen sacrifice. This is crazy, guys. And now let's see how is this madness going to end up. a takes b4, rook takes d7. Queen c3. First, we will quickly go through the game and then I will turn on Stockfish and we will see where Black's defense went wrong. Also, we will see how accurate that sacrifice was. He takes f7 check. So, this is the pawn which in the beginning of the game was standing on e2, right? Already it passed a long way. Now we have a fork. King goes on f8 and f takes e8 queen. King takes e8, rook d1. Now if you win white bishop, in return white will win black's dark squared bishop and then will put his both rooks on the 7th rank. That's why black played bishop f6, because this bishop can be very useful when organizing the defense. Also, it's not allowing, for example, knight g4 jump. Bishop c1, Tal is saving the bishop and at the same time is preparing Knight g5 jump, rook takes a2, there it goes, knight g5. Queen c2, meanwhile black is looking for a counterplay, and knight e4, attacking black bishop and uh, protecting the pawn on f2. Bishop e7, and now a question arises, how should white proceed? Please pause the video and try to find Tal's next moves. Ready? Uh, well, look, at the moment white has a rook and two minor pieces against the queen, right? Uh, against the queen and two pawns, uh, against two doubled pawns. 
But in here, Tal decided that it will be good to go for an exchange sacrifice as well and bang, we have rook takes e7. The dark squared bishop, which was playing a huge defensive role, is removed. Now, in material sense, white has only three minor pieces against the queen and two pawns, but suddenly black king is becoming exposed to white's harassment. After king f8, we have rook d8 check, king g7, rook d7 check, king h8, h4, opening up a loop for the king, at the same time strengthening the dark squared bishop on g5 further. There are just no weaknesses in white's camp. Rook a1 check, king h2, rook d1, and a very strong move, knight d6. Now there is a mating threat. Uh, for example, let's just make a random move b3, then bishop f6 check, and then rook d8 checkmate. That's why to knight d6 black answered with queen takes f2, taking under control the f6 square, but let me tell you that the outcome of the game has already been decided, and now let's see how is Tal going to finish up his opponent. The rook on d6 also dropped. b3 rook f1, and now it's time for black queen to drop e4, taking under control the d3 square, not allowing bishop d3, but with bishop c4 and then bishop a2. Again, white is managing to stop that pawn. b1 queen, desperate, desperate attempts. Oh, sorry, in here Tal first played bishop g5 check, and only then won the queen, although he could go for... Uh, bishop takes b1 straight away, and this is how the game ended. Robert Squia resigned. And now what I want to do is to go through the game while Stockfish is on. Okay, maybe from this move on. So in here Stockfish suggests rook a c1, building up a slow attack, and then for example queen d2, putting pressure on d6, but Tal went for c5 straight away. D takes c5, knight d5, knight d5, e takes d5, c takes b4, queen a4. At this point we have more or less equality, queen takes b4, a5, and d takes e6. There it goes, d takes e6 is actually Angie's first choice, and according to Stockfish, it's good to go for this move. Yeah, Tal made an absolutely precise move, Angie's top suggestion. A takes b4, rook takes d7, and queen c3. Queen c3 is already a mistake. Uh, better was playing queen takes d7, giving up the queen, and simplifying the position. Attacking the rook, the knight, if here, then bishop takes e5. And in the end of the day, we are reaching a drawish looking endgame, which is probably will end up in a draw. But in our game after rook takes d7, we have queen c3, and there followed e takes f7 check. King f8, which is another mistake, already a losing move. At least it was better to play king h8. On f8 the king is exposed to white's attack, and in this case already black can somehow uh, puts a resistance. What is this b3? If here, then in this case, already all white can do is to give a all white can do is to give a perpetual check, right? Yeah. So king f8 was another serious mistake, and very confidently Tal then finished up his opponent. We have rook a d1, which is also very precise. So at this point. We have three hanging pieces, right? This is interesting. Bishop f6, bishop c1, here, and there followed knight g5. Sokvish suggests rook e2, and then rook e1. Oh, interesting, rook e2, rook e1. An interesting defense. But yeah. Tal managed to take his opponent into a deep dark forest in this game where his opponent failed to find the right path and then this exchange sacrifice followed 
which is again a very accurate move and then very confidently Tal realized the advantage. The rest is just a matter of technique already, there is nothing black can do. Rook d1, knight d6, rook e7 and then knight f6 is stronger, but okay this is also winning. Check. And yeah, it's over. So this is it dear chess lovers, hope that you enjoyed this mega exciting game by Mikhail Tal, feel free to share it with your friends as well. And in the end, let's solve a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.